Good morning, St. Andrews, and welcome to our service for the second Sunday in Advent. As far as announcements, first thing, I'm hoping many of you stay on after the end of the service for our congregational meeting for a review of the budget and also to vote in uh, the new council members. Secondly, we have another emergency uh, council meeting this evening at uh, 7.30, anybody would want to join that as we continue to discuss uh, the opening or continuing closing of the church and the nursery school. Pastor, what else we got? I am going to not say most of you attend the, the congregational meeting. I'm going to say all of you. <laughs> um, it really is important we come together. This is, the, and I'm going to ask for your patience as we work through the voting process. Um, and just say, no matter how, whether it, uh, we can see you or by phone, we will include your vote. Um, if there are two people in a screen, we have a way, we'll figure it out. So stay put, please. Um, add lighting of the Advent wreath. Um, <clears throat> right as we start that, when I say, this week we light our candles, light your candles. Um, and, and this week, of course, we'll be lighting two of them. Uh, please don't forget our Wednesdays in Advent service. Uh, that begins at seven, that information was sent out. Um, if you don't have it, um, please let the office know, we'll make sure you get it. I think it's also on the website, right? Yes. Yes, thank you, Mark. Yes, as my husband's over here saying, it's also in the website. Yeah. <laughs> so both ways. Um, and as you kind of look ahead, Christmas Eve um, will be seven and 10. They will both be Zoom, um, either or. Um, there'll be, it'll be a lot of carols incorporated into that service. So as much as we can't sing together that we can hear each other, we can all sing the carols. And we will also be doing that on the following Sunday, which isn't that many days from there. That'll be a simple service of lessons and carols that you can sing your carols again. <laughs> so um, that's, that's what we'll be doing on those times. Getting because Christmas takes a bit of planning. Um, we are proceeding as if we will be on Zoom for those services. Uh, it, it, Christmas Eve is not a last minute kind of put together service. <laughs> so um, that we've got to do that. Um, you will uh, notice that Helen Nautis um, is on the prayer list. Uh, please keep her in your prayers as she um, has been discovered and is dealing with um, cancer. Um, so please, that's, that's why her name is there. It is okay that I'm saying this to all of you because I asked her first, <laughs> but um, uh, please keep her on your, in your prayers. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I just got corrected. She's on the prayer list that you're going to hear today, um, but not on your list. That'll be corrected at next bulletin. Part of, part of the problem with these bulletins is they are, they're sent two weeks out because of, of mailing issues. And so some of these things aren't as updated as they typically we would like them. <clears throat> we uh, prepare ourselves for worship by using the brief order for confession and forgiveness as is found in your bulletin. <clears throat> Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and who's still forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are held captive, captive by sin. In, in spite of our best efforts, efforts we, we have gone, gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up 
and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God, Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's now begin with hymn number 254, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We light our candles. We will read about the shepherds who come to see baby Jesus. As we think about shepherds who came to the stable, we remember that the Bible calls Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep. The shepherds of Bethlehem were taking care of their sheep the night Jesus was born. David told us in the 23rd Psalm that our shepherd takes care of us. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. Jesus calls himself our shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Even though our thoughts this season are on Jesus coming to earth, this scripture reminds us that one day that baby will give his life for our salvation. Thank you, Lord, that because of our good shepherd, we lack nothing. Amen. Amen. Let us stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the 40th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground.
ground shall become loving. Then the Lord, glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass, are, sorry, the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks I, be to God. Psalm 85 will be spoken responsively. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins sins. Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. <clears throat> Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second reading is taken from the third chapter of 2 Peter, beginning at the eighth verse. A reading from 2 Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to recompense. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Baptist Sunday. Now we get Mark's version of it here, but nevertheless, this is John the Baptist Sunday, and it's it's that interesting character, right? Who dressed funny and ate bugs. <laughs> and and I know that sounds strange, especially the way I just said it, but really, truly, it, it wasn't all that strange for somebody who kind of lived, had no money, kind of lived outside of society. It's kind of what it would have been. It, it, and, and I think that really, not that I can get into the mind of the, the gospel writer, but I think that's really the whole point in them saying that, that John, John wasn't living in the, the community of Jerusalem, right? <clears throat> Nevertheless, all of that aside, <laughs> I'd like to look at this whole kind of piece from John the Baptist, right? Three, three kinds of pieces here, wilderness, repentance, discipline, all right, wilderness, repentance, discipline. And we'll start with the wilderness. And as I said, as we understand John, he lived out by himself, away from society. Now, I'm not saying that that's what we should all do. We should all sell our homes and, and go out and, and live, I don't know, um, somewhere in Wyoming by ourselves. Uh, it, I don't know, you're going to find it. Well, maybe Pike County, I don't know. But anyway, um, but that's not the point here. Think about um, what John did when he was out there by himself. There was this sense because he was alone. If you've ever been out in the quietness of nature, there and there's something very special about that. There, there was a, there is a sense you can hear God, right? You're more attuned to the spirit. And, and, and he was able to kind of hear what God was calling him to do. That's the sense here, right? It is, is exactly that, is, is taking time to do something very different. Now, I know. We've all been stuck at home. So the sense of going into the wilderness, if we were to retreat, is doing something very different than our typical routine that we probably have a lot of stuck in right now, right? So what can we do to be very different? Right. Well, let's, let's say go a day without the television and the phone. We can do our own wilderness, right? Take a step back and, and, and be open to what God is, is talking to us about, hearing God's words, being more attuned to the spirit. That's, that's this first piece, the wilderness piece, the, the message we can pull off of what John did. Now he called for repentance. Now that's a, in, it's always an interesting word, repentance. You know, there's there's a sense there, isn't there, where you're you're down on your your knees before God and you're just listing all of the things that you did wrong, right? And that that's not really the sense here, right? That that there there is a sense of taking time to evaluate what your life is like. And that, that's more repentant. If, 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 we, if we look at the Greek for the word repent, right, which is what's being used here, 
It literally means change your life. So this wasn't necessarily meaning that your life was awful bad and, and you're, you're a lousy, rotten sinner. That's not what repentance means. But it, it means change your life. So, so now lock that in with, with wilderness. If, if you are taking time by yourself, kind of figuring out God's call, then you would know what flows next is, if God is calling me, this is how I need to change my life, right? There's, there's the peace. And in the quietness of the wilderness, we find our direction as to how we would repent, right? That's, that's that peace. So we embrace repentance. And lastly, discipline. Now, I know, we think about discipline, we think about going to the principal's office, right, um, kind of thing. There's that whole, oh, I'm in trouble now, right, kind of thing. Um, I have found more than once people have come into my office with that kind of thing. Uh-oh, the pastor needs to see me. What did I do wrong? It's like, oh, that's so awful. <laughs> but at any rate, that's not this discipline here. I, I would rather us see discipline as kind of like the glue that holds the wilderness and, and the repentance together. It's, it's almost a, a real, real kind of simple thing. It's almost like going into the grocery store and, and skipping the ice cream aisle even when you know Ben and Jerry has like those really, really good flavors. Yeah. <laughs> like, and instead going to the produce aisle and getting some fresh veggies. <laughs> right? Now that's a simple way to put that piece, but, but it is, it is that glue. It is, it is what that discipline that says, okay, I don't really want to do this change. This change is difficult. This change is hard for me to do, but, but the discipline is the glue that holds us to it until, until it becomes more natural for us. That, my friends, I think is how John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord. And, and what he was asking all those people that came out to be baptized to do. To do those things. Be prepared. Something new is coming. And it's not going to be the same. Right? These skill sets, as we find what God wants us to do, aren't easy. Right? But I think as we discover that we, we change how we function and go over to where God is calling us, and we embrace the hope of Advent, we will find the joy of the baby. Amen. And now let's continue with hymn number 265, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came.
we confess our faith now by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On, On the, the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> God of power and might, Tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Leading God, you ask. Ask us to make uneven, make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, your son Jesus brought the gift of healing and wholeness. Bring your healing presence now to all those who suffer from illness, those who suffer from addiction, those who struggle with emotional or mental health concerns, and to those in any type of distress. Especially, we name Helen, Elizabeth, Doreen, Pam, Ruth, and Jean, Marlon, Jim, Laurie, Vesta. Denny and Jim, Nicole, David, Carl, Pete, and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you on earth who now rest with their labors. Keep us in union with all your saints and bring us with them to the joyous feast of heaven. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod and the Bishop elect of our Synod, the Reverend Christopher DeForest. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we pray for an end to the pandemic COVID-19. Work with those who are creating a vaccine, blessing them with your wisdom. Comfort those who have lost loved ones and send your healing spirit on those who are ill. Help us be thankful for those working on the front lines. We name Cindy, Nick, David, Joe, Jim, Linda, and Tom, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Keep them safe in your protective care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly God, as we continue to be in a time of election that pits one against the other, we pray, dear God, for unity. We pray for peace. We pray that you would be with us so that we could walk forward together in your love. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace through the screen, one with another. <laughs> Let's now have the anthem, As a Little Child, Jesus Loves Me.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave gave himself for us, your and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love and unexpected spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. We will now have hymn number 264, Prepare the Royal Highway.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, thank you for being with us during this time of meeting. Thank you for giving us patience to do this differently in this pandemic. We pray, dear God, that you would continue to be with us and with St. Andrews, that we would be both spirit-filled and in all the ways that we can figure out, reach out to our community. Be with us as we leave this day. Bless our days filled with your joy. It is through Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.